Uh, another question here. So looking at the pathology uh, in figures A through D, which of the following is necessary to preserve the blood supply? So a little bit different question here. So we'll go through this one just a little bit more. Uh, the order of the figures is a little confusing, but on the left side, this is one of those subtle dislocations. Uh, but this, you can see this is definitely dislocated. Look at your Shinton's line is, is disrupted here. Uh, this isn't sitting way up high like we have seen in the previous uh, examples, but you can see that the femoral head is sitting above the arc of the acetabulum here. You also see a suggestion of some other bony components going on. Figure D is with it still dislocated. It's an obturator view. Again, you can see more uh, clearly that this is posteriorly dislocated and you look like you have uh, at least a posterior wall component to this injury complex. Uh, figure B now, we went from A, D now to B, looks like a post-reduction uh, x-ray. Uh, looks like the femoral head is sitting nicely under the source seal or the acetabular dome. Uh, turn your attention to this here. Looks like there's probably an inferior femoral head. Uh, fragment and maybe again that posterior wall you can see there and then the post reduction CT scan that we always get is uh, showing the extent of that posterior wall fracture so this question is asking how do we safely address both of these injuries if you're going to uh, again for sake of time we'll just go through that and you, you can address both of these injuries uh, posteriorly by utilizing a trochanteric osteotomy and doing a surgical hip dislocation uh, to get the femoral head and then the posterior dissection will help you uh, fix that posterior wall fracture. Uh, so femoral head fractures are again a rare fracture pattern uh, and it's kind of the next level of hip dislocation. Uh, same mechanism of injury all just depends on the position of the hip uh, during the dislocation event. Uh, we're seeing these more because of better resuscitation efforts. Again this is all the same uh, kind of information a same a high energy impact, hip and knee flexed, impact and injury, you're going to have uh, a lot of associated uh, injuries. Um, anterior dislocations are going to be more associated with impaction uh, injuries as that, that femoral head perches on the anterior acetabulum. Uh, so these femoral head fractures, these Pipkin type of fractures are going to be associated with other bony injuries, almost the same as a, the frank or the isolated hip dislocation injuries. Uh, it's important to know your femoral head blood supply when uh, treating these injuries. Uh, again, the, as everyone should know, the uh, medial circumflex femoral artery is the main supply to the uh, femoral head. Uh, these other uh, arteries are much less important and uh, can at times, if necessary, uh, be uh, ligated, especially the ligamentum teres. Uh, it's the medial circumflex femoral artery that needs to be protected at all times. Uh, that circum that um, arterial ring is what is kinked off or injured in, disrupt in fractures and dislocations and can lead to a avascular necrosis. Uh, so the Pipkin classification, quickly, type 1 occurs below the fovea and it does not involve the, the um, weight-bearing dome and these can be treated non-operatively or with ORIF or with even excision if you need to. Um, the type 2's uh, creep up into the weight-bearing dome and typically will require fixation if significantly displaced as it can be associated with uh, more instability as well as increased uh, pressures on the hip, uh, on the femoral head and acetabulum and uh, post-traumatic changes. Um, the Femoral neck fractures are the big players. Uh, it always confused me why this is number three and not number four. I think this is more important. If you have femoral neck fractures, those almost always require fixation of the femoral neck. Uh, and then the type fours are the associated acetabular fractures, uh, which don't always need uh, surgical fixation. Again, kind of going over this again, frontal impact in VA knee, striking the dashboard, fall from high, high energy, uh, pretty severe and painful injuries. Seeing this same picture over again, it's going to have the same look as a hip dislocation if it is dislocated. Sometimes uh, you'll see these without an obvious dislocation and that's probably because the hip spontaneously relocated. You're going to have the same kind of clinical appearance and associated sciatic nerve injuries. 
Uh, always assess the appropriate radiographs, AP pelvis, lateral hip, and Jude views to evaluate reduction and associated injuries. Uh, you can get inlet and outlets if you're wanting to look at your pelvic ring. Again, always CT scan. If you're reducing it, get a CT scan. If you see the fracture, get a CT scan to look at the size and any associated loose bodies. Assess your reduction. Uh, so these can be treated non-operatively. Um, you want to get that hip reduced again as soon as possible. Get your post, get your CT scan. Uh, most of the time, the Pipkin ones or the infrafovial fractures can be treated with non-operative management, touchdown weight bearing uh, for uh, six weeks is just kind of your your easy number to remember. As long as there's no interposed fragments and the hip joint is stable, then this is uh, very reasonable to perform. And you want to make sure you check frequent x-rays early on to make sure there's no uh, subtle subluxation occurring. Uh, we want to fix these if you have a fracture involving the dome, a Pipkin II that is displaced more than a millimeter or so, or if there's associated loose bodies, you might as well, since you're going to be in there, fix the femoral head fracture or if you have associated fractures, uh, but that's not always the case. If it's a small infrafovial fracture, they don't always need fixation. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pipkin fours, again, posterior wall fragments don't always need to be repaired. And if you have a large uh, femoral head fracture, um, maybe you can avoid going posteriorly and just fix it anteriorly. Uh, arthroplasty is not as common. To perform in this indication, but it can be a useful procedure in older patients who are fairly active and we want to get them on their feet uh, weight bearing sooner or if they have pre existing uh, arthritic disease. Uh, so, again, similar approaches, uh, usually this Smith Peterson approach anteriorly. The Watson Jones isn't as useful because you're not going to see as much as of the femoral head to repair. Uh, we've already, uh, Dr. Taylor already talked about the planes and the, uh, the approaches there. Uh, again, the Smith-Peterson is more useful than the Watson-Jones. Oops. Uh, the, uh, so we're going to, we've already gone through that. You want to expose the, the fracture, get it anatomically reduced and securely fixed. This is a pretty impressive x-ray that uh, is unfortunately not mine, but a lot of small screws to fix your articular fragments and then you have some larger screws to address the femoral neck fracture. You want to make sure that you countersink your heads if you don't have headless screws or biabsorbable screws. Always countersink any screws that you put within the femoral head so that you don't cause any uh, additional damage to the articular surface of the acetabulum. Uh, generally you want to get these joints moving so early motion uh, and then delay the weight bearing, uh, put them at touchdown weight bearing rather than non-weight bearing and uh, we want to make sure you strengthen early on the um, quadriceps and abductors. And keep uh, getting serial radiographs uh, six months or even longer. Hip dislocations, I'd say go to two years as that AVN can occur that far out. Uh, again, posterior approach, we won't go over that. That was already covered. Uh, Smith-Peterson approach has already been covered. Um, and then you can do whatever arthroplasty approach, if that's the, the way you choose to treat these, uh, whatever approach you're comfortable with. I know the anterior approach is becoming more popular. Um, heterotropic ossification can occur up to 64%. Um, so depending on the mus associated muscular damage, radiation therapy is my personal treatment of choice. You can also do uh, anti-inflammatory treatment. AVN uh, incidents can be pretty high, up to a quarter of these. Uh, again, delayed reduction is the most uh, de uh, determining factor on increasing that rate. Uh, sciatic nerve neuropraxia usually recovers uh, 60 to 70 percent or even more, uh, at least anecdotally in my practice. They almost always recover, uh, but sometimes they don't, and that becomes a big issue with a chronic foot drop, usually. Um, arthritis can and will uh, form usually to some degree, whether or not that's symptomatic is uh, patient dependent uh, and will, can cause a stiff hip. So early motion is key. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.